Well, now we're looking at what's uh, driving the local markets, and I'm joined by Levan Gopal from 28E Capital. Afternoon, Levan. Uh, what's driving local markets? Well, it's what's driving international markets at the moment. Uh, the Cyprus issue. After the weekend, we opened in deep red territory yesterday. Quite a bit of a sell-off with uh, fear that euro markets and the rest of the world uh, would dip on the Cyprus news. A few points that we must consider. Cyprus has been tax haven for some time. Whilst it is a part of the eurozone, it has favorable tax legislation and it's also uh, got fairly loose exchange controls, uh, highly unregulated. It's attracted quite a bit of hot money, uh, a lot of mafia money, uh, some of the uh, illicit uh, or uh, illegal casino type funds. It does sit on a pile of cash mm. uh, and I think some of the Euro authorities are quite disturbed by the fact that they must come through to uh, Cyprus bailout uh, for a country that hasn't really contributed a lot on its own. Uh, the tax initially was thought to be for large accounts, that is to say accounts larger than 100,000 euros, which would have been uh, in order since that is the target, mm. that is the illicit funds. Joe Public doesn't sit with that amount of cash. But now, I was speaking to Michael Houston in London, and he was saying, well, if they did exempt, and now there's talk of reducing the, the tax on the lower, the, uh, lower savers, the lower amounts, then they won't make enough money. Yeah. I think that uh, they're probably going to be looking at targeting some of the, the smaller funds, and therein becomes a problem. Uh, there's also the large uh, amount of, of, of players that are considering the effect on Europe as a whole and whether this will be introduced into Italy, Spain, uh, some of the southern European countries. Uh, for now it would seem that uh, there isn't really a necessity uh, to, to put that into play. Uh, it's already a highly punitive financial uh, landscape for, for anyone living in southern Europe. So I don't think there'll be, a deposit, there'll be a taxing deposits uh, uh, for the rest of Europe. Uh, Cyprus has a clear reason at this stage. Well, if there's any hint of them uh, taxing deposits, then there won't be deposits there to tax. Uh, I mean, if any other country does this, that'll kind of confirm that there's a trend. And what we were saying earlier is once you've broken this trust between the bank and the, um, the lender, uh, the, 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 the person who's putting the money in the bank, I mean, there is a trust relationship. And whether it's broken by the bank or a regulator, an outside authority, Everything's changed. It's highly unlikely that the EU would sanction uh, any other country uh, having a taxation on deposits. But perhaps they'd better say this. Uh, I think <laughs> they, they've already articulated. Mm. Bear in mind this is likely to have a run on banks in Europe mm. and a breakdown of the financial system as we know it. Mm. The banking system is integral for financial markets and uh, Europe to continue. Uh, and at this stage, uh, I think the EU has articulated that it's not going to happen for the rest mm. of Europe. They have a cogent re reason for yeah. Cyprus. Let's look at our market there. The Rand was at 9.26, and I talked earlier about some of those big resource shares down. Uh, Kumba, for example, down nearly 4% uh, th on the afternoon there today. So wh what's happening with our markets? Quite a big drop yesterday, a smaller drop today. There has been a, a rattle on financial markets globally because of this euro crisis. So as they say, the risk is back on. Uh, what we have noticed is a sell-off in the currency, uh, the rand moving uh, closer to seven uh, to nine and a quarter, and as that happens. Uh, Players initially having bought the Rand Hedge stocks last week, uh, having pushed our market up, are now realizing this is a financial crisis and maybe they should go a little steadier. So that would explain why Nuspair is down by so much today, for example? Richmond as well, under pressure the last few days. Uh, so a number of the Rand-related stocks finding uh, some profit-taking. On the other hand, SAB Miller, one and a third percent up. So yeah, I, I think that there, there will be pockets of, uh, of difference, but in general, players were happy to take profits on RAND stocks. Interestingly, as of yesterday, a number of uh, buyers coming in for South African financials, all of our banks in favor and the banking sector, especially those with uh, commercial uh, business in South Africa, lifting quite nicely. I saw investors come under pressure, and that's because a lot of UK and Euro banks were hurt. But South African banks were looking strong. Mm. Again, it's always a source of pride that our banks come to the rescue on the market, don't they? Now, SocGen, I can't say Societe Generale, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, so it's known as SocGen. They've warned something about South African bonds. What's, what's that about? 
They've come out with an indication that the South African bonds are far too risky and that uh, a lot of uh, cash has, has swished its way in. Uh, I, I don't agree with this. And I believe the South African bond market's been firm uh, through the face of some difficult political uh, problems, uh, certainly slow reactions to strikes and unions last year. But in general, our market and our economy uh, has been fiercely fighting off some of the global battles mm -hmm. and has managed to stand strong. Uh, as far as our capital markets go, whenever there's a capital raising exercise, you find fairly decent subscription. Uh, and the yield offered by South African bonds makes it a very attractive home for international money. So in recent times, you've seen a fair amount of cash flowing in. There is, of course, a very nice um, uh, interest rate carry. So a lot of Euro, uh, US Euro funds uh, coming through to South Africa. And I, I think they may be talking their book. This comes around the climate of the uh, interest rate discussions at the Reserve Bank. In my opinion, they're likely to go flat. Uh, and for at least the next few meetings, the indication is yeah. that we will see a flat line on interest rates. Well, we've heard no one else come in the studio here in the last couple of weeks suggesting that they're going to do anything else but keep it flat. Do you think they should keep it flat? In my opinion, it's important that they keep it flat. It gives you some sort of a, a foreseeable uh, business uh, uh, landscape. You're able to plan yourself. Uh, also, from uh, the Reserve Bank's uh, point of view, they've given us certain pointers that they'll be looking out for in terms of growth and inflation. And as, as long as those markers are intact, it's important for them to keep to their word. There is a likelihood down the line uh, that there may be interest rate increases, and that's likely to be a, something of a, a, a cooling mechanism for growth. For now, a flatliner. Well, cons we haven't talked about the consumer today. Some weeks we talk about the consumer all the time, and other weeks we don't. This is one of the weeks where we haven't talked much about the consumer. People talk about them being overextended. A lot of the companies that have reported have said you know, consumers are under pressure. Of course, consumers have taken low interest rates for granted, or a lot of them will have taken them for granted for a long time, because it's been at an all-time low for a very long time. It seems to be a, a problem that hits us uh, every 10 years or so. Mm. We've seen it in 98 and we've seen it uh, 10 years thereafter, 2008. Uh, whilst you have massive spikes in interest rates, it unfortunately is going to be a problem for homeowners. Uh, a number of businesses uh, tend to suffer. For now, it would seem that there's no uh, likelihood for a shock in the system or rationale for a, a spike in interest rates. At least a moderate interest rate increase may be something that they look out for in time to come. Uh, but uh, at, at this stage, we're sitting at a very comfortable yeah. yield. Certainly, there's a lot of mechanisms you can take yeah. into consideration to hedge yourself yeah. against any interest rate shocks. Final comment on, uh, on the, uh, the wall. Uh, what shares are you interested in at the moment and sectors? Uh, in general, I think a lot of the commodity stocks are still looking fairly cheap. Mm. Uh, you'll find that some of the big uh, resource counters, uh, Anglo's Billiton, having been knocked uh, quite a bit. Now, uh, as we see the dust settle on the euro crisis, you're likely to see precious metals slightly higher. Possibly some weakness on industrial counters, but in general, uh, I think a, a week around will make mm. for a very strong uh, case to be buying uh, resource shares. Well, I said it was the last question, Levan, but I've just been handed the piece of paper for Remgro. We expected their results, and I think they've just come out now. So uh, what they did do, they warned that headline earnings would be lower, but that was to do with a mediclinic uh, refinancing of a debt. That's one of their major holdings. And then they said, excluding that, they expected the headline earnings to be 16 to 20% up. In fact, um, headline earnings per share uh, salient features down 35, but that excludes the, uh, the Mediclinic refinancing. Interim dividend per share, there's a key number, is plus 15%. Uh, so, uh, Remgro, uh, are you yep. holding there's, there's these companies which you could buy yourself if you wanted to? It's a very easy purchase. Uh, one shot, one hit, you uh, end up with a collection of 15 or so strong businesses uh, and a lot of other minor interests. Uh, let's keep in mind over the years, Remgro has given birth to a number of strong uh, listed companies on the JSE, uh, and they do have the Midas touch. Uh, the dividend increase in line with a lot of uh, the industrial uh, industrial shares in South Africa, and the trend now to show uh, an increase in dividends. Uh, Div yield will look strong. Uh, the argument that you could probably buy uh, the some of these shares cheaper on their own uh, is true, 
but then within the Remgro uh, stable are a number of unlisted companies Correct. that you couldn't get exposure no. to unless you actually bought Remgro. So you have to look at that mix and looking at the returns that they've had, there's that total return index which uh, says if, uh, appreciation in the share price plus dividends reinvested, what would your return have been in Remgro? Over one year it's 1,432 if you put in a thousand rand, that's a big return. Over seven years it's 5,000 rand on 1,000 and over 10 years you would have 17,000 for your 1,000. That's a pretty good return. Certainly where uh, you look at these companies that uh, are clusters and uh, a number of players looking at the fact that you, you will find a discount to NAV uh, and certainly an attraction to buy the sum of the parts. Uh, I think with Remgro, you'll find it's a diverse mix of technology, uh, of some tobacco interests, of financials, uh, financials so uh, as well as some general industrials. So you're able to get a very, it, it probably is a sexier version uh, than buying the Satrix.